Okay, this is me coming up to my uh, last ride with the Honda CB1000R and just my experience of having it. Uh, done 550 miles on it over the month that I've had it. I uh, used it in the uh, sunshine, in the rain. Uh, everyone, why is everyone doing a pee while I drive? Have I scared all these sheep so much? Um, and uh, all the quirks I've learned about it. Oh, what I can say is this is such a, a supremely accomplished bike. Uh, so much of this bike is just brilliant. The engine is brilliant, the power is brilliant. The delivery, I would say, could be uh, more linear. So that torque boost that you get after 6,000 revs is terrifying, uh, to the point where it's very unusual to do full throttle accelerations. It's just near on a pulse, unless you're in a high gear. Uh, <laughs> high gear um, doing a full throttle acceleration is not so the majority of the time this bike is quarter to a third throttle fools uh, and you're still absolutely hooning it everywhere So power-wise, speed-wise, comfort-wise has been fantastic. You're, not, you're in a nice upright position, feet nicely uh, tucked underneath you, easy to hold onto this lovely shaped tank. Um, the handlebar position is nicely uh, spaced, so it's a nice wide position. And um, uh, so you've got good visibility, you're upright, you can see over all the cars that you're uh, overtaking. And uh, uh, in terms of drive-wise, it's brilliant. Looks-wise, I think this black, this non-black version, so there's a black edition, and this is not a black edition. You can get um, a black edition which has quick shifters and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is just the bog standard one. Uh, I would say look-wise is, is a bit uh, undercover, uh, a bit not that, not really showing too much of it. And, uh, uh, but otherwise, it's just been, I, I, I can't think of complete, right, okay, hold on, I'm gonna park up here and try and think of some complaints I have about this bike. So as I said, uh, the blackness of it isn't my, my top uh, attractiveness there. Uh, I think the, there's a blue version of this and a red version. I think that looks a better looking uh, kind of thing. Uh, also the front headlights are just always on anytime you turn the bike on always on which gives me a little bit of fear that we're going to drain the battery uh, quickly so just always be careful of that. Um, the the um, mudguard cheap plastic but again that's I suppose that's got its benefits because it means it's easy to uh, replace uh, brakes fantastic the exhaust pipes you've got your four there a little bit of a uh, toilet duck to get them cleaned uh, definitely did the business there the rear tire although it's this uh, single side uh, side arm swing arm uh, which it looks cool to manually adjust the chain requires a number of tools and a lot of stuff especially with this bit here it's it's a bit of a tricky one. It's definitely one to take to the shop and ask them to do it. So that having it not having a single sided swing arm, although looks cool, is actually more more of a difficult thing to to deal with uh, when you've got it. But yeah, look at that angle there. That's a shot. It's quite handy when you take the key out you've got your little storage compartment at the back here which just pops off and in there you've actually got the tools 
for doing the uh, suspension adjustments there. So you can adjust the suspension with the tools coming there and all your little bits for that. Uh, the, um, the, I think that's on. Uh, the front suspension is adjustable. You've got your tension and your compression and your uh, preload. Uh, so was that separate function forks and they're very easy just with the uh, with you could even do it with your keys just rotating that uh and with a little uh, flathead screwdriver there but yeah just it's it's a fantastic but i think that, i just think in the looks department it could be a better color uh but in terms of bike wise it is fantastic like just it's, it's two bikes in one. It's a bike which up to 6,000 revs, the slow maneuvers, the, the ability to just doddle around through town, so good. And then when you want to absolutely have a Jekyll and Hyde going a little bit faster um, uh, <laughs> and getting above 6,000 revs and going full throttle is just mental. It's a bike that you can really develop on, develop your skills on, or you could just ride it like a pensioner, not a problem. With having it no kind of wind fairing as well, you really get the sense of speed. These aren't flickering, that's just the GoPro seeing it like that. The sensation of speed is so huge because you are getting hit by all the wind. So maybe long distances, motorway stuff, it might be a bit of a, a pain in the butt. But, uh, and I think that I've seen ones with better exhausts as well. Although this one is better than, for example, the Honda CMX, uh, 1100 which is a big briefcase on the side and I think the black edition has a black blacked out version of it which I think looks cooler uh, I've seen ones where it's a smaller can at the end definitely uh, looks better because it is a bit of a bulbous kind of thing down there uh, but oh, look at that look at the sun coming through the wheel there oh that's lovely love that a lot but yeah okay let's go for a ride finishing off the day I think that is a great way to finish how easy it is to actually ride. Also, in terms of height-wise, depending on the trousers you've gone, this is a 830 centimeter seat, uh, and for me that is a little bit. Uh, it's not that it's too high. It's just in winter time when the weather's getting bad and there might be slippy stuff underneath. I would rather be lower down than. It's far better to be a single foot stopper on this, but if it's slippy ground, I want to be a little bit lower. So 830 for me is just a little bit too high for comfort, for safety, uh, when there might be uh, debris on the ground. But yeah, that, that, so as I say, this bike is really, the bike that's so amazed me so much by how it's so easy to ride slowly. So the <laughs> a litre bike, where the biggest thing to talk about is how easy it is to ride slowly. Like just, I thought leaser bikes were just terrifying and maybe the other ones are. You know, the ones that can, you know, this can rev to 11 and a half thousand RPM. But uh, uh, this, those ones, maybe, maybe they are more scary, but this just is so easy to manage for around town. Town. 
and again his looks are I would say not spectacular so there's probably a less worry of it being nicked so if you live in a place where bikes are getting stolen more it's usually the more pretty looking bikes that are getting stolen maybe this is one which can give you all the performance that you need this is terrifying look this is what I'm about to go over this is what I'm saying is scary it's muddy road and then over a cattle grid which will be slippy metal so gotta just go super straight over that and over then straight into some sheep poo brilliant uh, <laughs> but yeah th this bike is, is two bikes in one and it's just so impressive in how easy it is to ride slow which is the biggest shock for me anybody that's like i don't think you need to work your way up i I've, i haven't been riding for a whole year i only passed my test uh last year uh no this year actually so i'm only like nine months into riding a bike and you can easily own this bike and ride this bike slowly and carefully and with intention everywhere you're going through the city weaving through traffic no problem at all and then once you've developed more and more skill if you want to really start going for it then then you can but at the same time you don't have to it's got it says it's got 145 horsepower um, from the dynos that I'm reading, that might be 145 horsepower from the engine. Check out the moon, that's cool. From the engine, and once it gets down to the wheels, maybe around about 120. That is ridiculous amounts of power. 120 horsepower for one person sitting on it. Weight-wise, it's over 200 kilograms, so there's definitely sports bikes which are lighter and faster and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of just being able to just do everything, this bike really does it it's comfortable you can definitely do long distances on it you can do long distances slowly and you can do long distances going absolutely melt your face speed in fact that's what i'm going to do on my ride home here so i'm going to say bye bye to these little sheep CB1000R go a little bit off road. Let's find out. Oh, listen to this. Listen. Oh my goodness, that's good. Oh, <laughs> that is why you get an inline four. Oh my goodness. Okay, I. Uh, that is definitely a closed road there. Uh, Super close. Okay. Absolutely nothing. Oh my god, going over all this mud. Not gonna be good when I get back out in the road. Alright, let's uh let's just get another sound check there again. Oh best, best sounding motorbike you can get. So good. Well, maybe not, but definitely up there. Wait, let's see how, how high I can even get the rim. Oh sliding! Oh my god! Right, ready? Here, echo from this side. Oh, and then from here, from the outside. Wow, just see how fast the, the revs go up. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, now my wheels are all slimy. That's not good. Uh, time to go for a little um, safety ride first back out into hopefully the sun's not blinding me but definitely careful on the on the corners that's for sure and the gearing it's not that the gearing is long it's like the revs it revs so much that you can be in third gear and just never change gear <laughs> like if you're going somewhere you can just stay in third gear the whole time and you still have piles of acceleration at the you know below 30 miles an hour and keep on going well past breaking all speed limits kind of uh, fun there in fact we'll do a little okay here's a little demo i'll get into third along this road um and again you can pull away in second on this road as well quite happily so I'll get out so so yeah here look there's lots of leaves on the road and stuff and if you've got a slightly slippy ground i think it's okay so there there's a complaint for me for but that's more my body shape uh, 830 centimeters is probably just a little bit too tall but okay front second 
pulling off, not a problem. You don't even need to be in first. Okay, now we'll go to third, and we'll just stay in third all the way home.
Okay, what I'm going to practice is a little uh, real life slow speed maneuver. So as uh, we're all taught during our uh, CBT training and our uh, and our uh, motorbike uh, license training is uh, slow speed maneuvers. So here I'm going to practice uh, a U-turn on this road. Uh, it's on a hill, so we'll do it a little bit further down. Get a little bit further down. Okay, so I'm, ima I'm imagining just now I've got my instructor behind me. He's like, okay, pull it to the left whenever you feel safe. Go into neutral, bring the bike to a stop. And when you're ready, perform a, a U-turn to the other side of the road. Okay, sir, certainly will. Check my mirrors, mirror, mirror, into first. Uh, shoulder, was it, uh, what's the shoulder Shoulder thing called? Lifesaver, checking lifesaver, yeah, okay. No need to put on indicator because a U-turn should be only done when you're on a, a empty road. So start pulling away, foot on rear brake, make sure we've got our balance, head round. Oh, that was tough. That was tough. I'm pretty crap at that one. But baby, I got it. Woohoo!